what's going on? So we have scanned tree trunks, we've scanned rocks in Grand Canyon. Now obviously the next step up from that is scanning live ducks. So we are here at the park, see some ducks hanging around over there somewhere. So I'm gonna try and see if I can photo scan the ducks because I know people are getting tired of rocks. So I got your ducks right here and hopefully they don't bite me. Now I'm just playing. Um, I'm gonna try and find somebody in the park. Now I went in the coolest part of the day here, which is right now it's 109 degrees, which is the coolest part. So I'm out here, I'm hoping there's somebody out here just kind of hanging out and I'm gonna try and see if they'll uh, agree for me to take a picture of them for about an hour, you know, cause photogrammetry takes a long time. So yeah. Hi. Hi. Do you have like 45 minutes? Um, I'm taking a photo, like photogrammetry stuff. Do you mind if you like my subject today? There's like nobody else here but you. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. I mean, sure. you're already like sitting there. So um, do you mind putting this bald cap on? Cause it's, okay. it's, it's gonna look really weird with hair flying away and stuff. It's really hard to do. So okay. if you don't mind, that'd be super cool. My name is Jay, by the way. Kristen. Kristen? Nice, to, nice to meet you. So um, let me go turn this off and I'm gonna go set up my behind the scene camera, okay. which is gonna be my cell phone, but yeah. So like I mentioned in my previous videos, when it comes to photogrammetry, you wanna take pictures uh, during overcast days. Now, unfortunately, this park right here doesn't open up until like 8 to 9 a.m. And by that time, the sun is actually pretty high already. At this point, I did put her under a tree so she gets a little bit of a shade. But as you can see in this image right now, her left side, actually her right side of her face is in the shadow just a little bit. And unfortunately, there's there wasn't really anything I can do just because of that time of day. Now, like I said in the video, this was probably the coolest part of the day as far as the park being open. So I just really had to make do. But whenever you're planning your photogrammetry, go ahead and plan for overcast days or when it's like cloudy so that you'll get an evenly lit subject. Okay, so here we are in reality capture software and what I'm going to do now is try to recreate the photos we took of Kristen in CG or 3D. Okay, so quick start. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to change my layout to 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equals 3. In case you didn't know that. Man, I'm feeling smart today. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the folder and I already created a folder here titled A. As you can see here, we have 101 images. Now, I wish I could have taken more, but I thought that it was going to be enough. But that's okay. Uh, we're going to try and work with this right here. So we have the images. As you can see, I pretty much just went around Kristen here. And like I said in the previous voiceover, her face is in the shadow just a little bit. I mean, by not a lot, just, just a little bit. And when I was taking her picture, it didn't look, you know, too bad. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now I already removed, I think I had one blurry picture and that was it, which is pretty awesome. So you can see I shot it at F35. So what I'm going to do is go to the alignment right here and I'm gonna to go to the settings. And I changed this cause this is 10,000 by default and this is like 40,000. So I changed it to 100,000 and I changed the image overlap to low which let me change that to medium. So you're gonna have to play around with this. The settings I'm showing right now might not actually be the setting that's gonna work for your photogrammetry, okay? So let's align images and see how well the software aligns this image here. Okay, and it looks like it created two components. One has 70 pictures and one has 17 pictures. So I'm gonna take a look at the 17 one real quick. And let's take a look. I'm going to change this to my 2D view. All right, so that's going to be tough. Those back ones are just going to be really hard because there's not a lot of thing that kind of sticks out. So what I'm going to do is delete this and then try to realign it again. So I'm going to delete all this and see if I can realign it one more time. So I'm going to change this to low and see if this will yield a better result for us. Sometimes you just kind of have to play around with the settings because sometimes I don't even like 
change any setting and I just realign the images and it just does a better job. But basically you want as um, minimum of components as you can, meaning like 101 out of 101. So 17 is quite a bit because, you know, it's going to be a lot of realigning manually. So let's see if we can get a better result by just changing that to low and then realigning it again. All right. So I'm liking this number here because we got 89 chunk two and then five so again we're going to check out the 2d right here and let's look at the component zero let's see what happened which one probably the same thing okay so that one is the right side of her face which is good because i can easily align that okay and you know scanning human obviously this is my very first street human photogrammetry right her face is pretty smooth for the most part right it's not gonna have a lot of you know like a rock like a rock has so many edges rough edges and it's easier to kind of like create or recreate in 3d but her face is pretty smooth for the most part okay and thankfully she didn't actually wear too much makeup because if she did, then I would have been really screwed because her face would have been just really smooth with no surface. So I'm going to take that as a five component is good. I'm happy with that. And this two images right here, I'm going to open up. Okay, so again, the back, right? And obviously, Reality Capture is just having issues as far as aligning this with the rest of the image. But what I'm going to do is save this for now. Okay, so we're going to take care of the big chunk first of the five. Now, if you have any better tips on how to do this, let me know. But this is kind of like how I learned it from the documentation. So I'm going to go to component two. And like I said, we're going to take care of the five images first. So the, the right side of her face. So I'm going to go to component two, which is where our majority of the chunk of our images. Oh, look at that. That's behind the scenes camera right there, buddy. So I'm going to go on the other side of her face. I'm going to look for it somewhere. If I can find it. Okay, so here's one, 660. Now what I'm going to do is actually do a 1 plus 2 plus 2. And I'm going to change this to a 2D view. Change that to a 2D and this is a 2D. And I'm going to drag that 660 right here. And as you can see, 660. And I'm going to find another one that kind of looks like that. 635. Yes, I'm going to drag that there. Let's look at 658. Yes, I'm going to drag that as well. And let's see. Oh, that's kind of harder. Let's do a 632. I'm going to pick all these images pretty much showing the same exact features of what's missing. Because so if I look at these picture right here, I'm going to drag and drop it. This image was not able to connect to the rest of the chunk. So basically what we're doing is we're connecting these five pictures so that it's going to belong right here. It's going to be added to the component two. So we're going to try and do merge component zero with component two. That's the goal. So uh, let's go to 660 again, because I think that's what I just pulled out. Right. Oh, man. OK, let's just pick another one that has the same features. Doesn't have to be the same exact one. So 632, I already have 632. 633 is really close. 661, do I have a 661? Okay, that's close enough. Now you can kind of see why I asked her to put the um, bald cap on because if I didn't, her hair would be everywhere right now. I mean, you can see there's a little bit of hair right here, um, but as much as you can, you know, get a bald cap and just control the hair. You know, because it's going to help you in the long run here. So what are we going to do now? What we're going to do is actually create control points on all of these images in component two. So if you click right here. I'm going to pick these three right here because they're pretty prominent on all the images. As you can see, I can see all of them here. I can see it here. And I can also see it in the image up here from component zero. So that's why we're choosing this. So I'm going to go right here. That's going to be point zero. And I'm going to tell it, you know, it's actually on this one and then down here, this one, and then down here, this one. So that works out. And then what we're going to do is go back to the first image, create a point one now. Okay. Point one is right there. And then point one is right there. Point one is right there. Again, create another one, two, two, two. Okay, so now we connected all four of these pretty much. Okay, this is the same exact uh, position. 
as these. If you're familiar with tracking, say like After Effects, you know what this is. You know, you pick out the best contrast, contrasted area on her face, which like I said, is good that she didn't wear a lot of makeup because it helps us out as far as, you know, getting that tracking whenever the software is trying to figure out what her face should look like. Okay, so now that we have those done, I am now going to minimize this and I'm gonna uncheck control points. And I'm gonna start dragging the component zero images. So here's one. And as you can see, we can see those three dots. And let me check 697, again, same thing. And let's do 696, again, same exact thing. All right, so I left this one right here because I'm actually gonna use this as reference. So what I'm gonna do is click on point zero, press control, and I'm gonna drag and drop that to the component zero images. I'm gonna click on point zero right here. Okay, then I'm gonna go control, point zero right there and then point one same thing click control drag it to that reference and drag it to that reference then we got point two boom oh we're missing point one but it's okay there's point two and i'm gonna drag point one up again there you go so Point one. Okay, and then we're gonna grab two. Control two. Right? So now we just told the software, hey, for these three images, use this. They should be pasted right here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just press uh let me see, let me click on point two again so that'll disappear. Click on, shouldn't have anything on my cursor here. Align images again. Okay, so now it created another component. Now we have 94 of 101, which I'm actually pretty happy about. So if I go to component 2, we had 89. Now we just added these three images to this component 0, which is good because I'm only missing a couple of images. So I'm going to double click that, and I'm, gonna, I'm already in 3Ds. So I'm going to go, go around. I think I'm, what I'm going to do now is just make sure that... I'm setting the reconstruction region. Oh, control Z on that one. Make sure that her entire head is covered. Just like so. I'm not too worried about the ground plane here because it's really just a neck and a head that I really want. So I'm going to save this now. So from here, I'm going to change my layout to just one plus one. And I'm going to go back to help right here. I absolutely love this. This is such a good idea. So, double click right here. I'm just gonna move around. So if you wanna get rid of those little annoying cameras, if you go to scene, you can just shrink those. All right, so the next step is actually going to be computing this to become a 3D model. So to do that, let's go back to workflow. I'm gonna go calculate model. I'm gonna choose normal quality. All right, so it looks like it calculated our model here. And as you can see right here, the right side of her face is a little bit messed up, especially around this area. And obviously I didn't have a ladder, so the top part is screwed, but that's okay. I mean, technically you just really need her face right here. Now, there's a lot of ways you can clean this up. You could probably take this in ZBrush, which we're gonna try and see. But right now, what I really wanna do is just get this thing textured up to see what it will look like because I'm pretty excited to see how uh, well this worked for us. So what we're going to do is just do a lot of automated cleanup tools here. So I'm going to go to reconstruction and I'm just going to click clean the model. All right, that's good. And I'm going to do smoothing tool as well. And I'm just going to smooth and leave everything by default. And what we're going to do next, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these right here. I'm going to go ahead and unwrap this thing here, okay? So I'm going to go to unwrap settings right here. We're going to use everything like we've done before, 10, 10, 2, 8K texture, unwrap. So as you can see, we're at model 3 now because we were cleaning it up and uh, doing a smoothing tool. So it's creating a different version each time you do that. So next thing we're going to do is change this to 2D. And we're going to go to images and look for a good 
color corrected image. I don't know why that looks kind of pink, but I'm going to go to selected input right here. And I think I already, yeah, I already did this one. So I'm going to go enable right here. And then I'm going to correct colors. All right, let's make sure everything is good here. So let's go back. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. Double click our model three. Make sure everything is good. Let's take a look at the settings for this. Let's go check out, check out the texturing. We're getting 121% texture quality, which I'm pretty happy with. That's good. So it's going to create three textures as well. Looks good. And now what we're going to do is a uh, texture reprojection. So we're going to take this model three and we're going to take the texture information for model one. Okay. So to do that, we're just going to go to the construction again, texture reprojection and I can minimize this so it doesn't confuse a lot of people. Select the input as well. So right here, we project model texture. I'm going to say the source model is going to be model one. And we're going to go with the result as model three. So we're going to take the texture information, the normal map from this, and we project it to model three, which is what we want. And I'm going to have normal reproject and turn on as enabled. All right. So what we're going to do next is just press texture. Okay, so it looks like it is done texturing and we now see our final textured model. And yes, you can definitely see the difference between the light side and the shadow side, but without any actual manual cleanup, <laughs> this is actually pretty darn good. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. Now I'm gonna have to find a way to clean this up in another software because I don't have ZBrush. It's not a bad scan, I don't think. I mean, obviously, the, the like I said, the shadow and light area could have been better, but I'm gonna try and see, I'm gonna do some research and see how I can clean this up a little bit. This is a different challenge. I mean, you can kind of scan rocks all day, but when it comes to humans, it is definitely a lot harder. Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any tips on how I can make this a little bit better, also let me know. And I'll see y'all later.